Hi, this is Professor Davis. This is your topics checklist for Module 6. Well, in this module, what we want to do is to finish up Chapter 3 on our Introduction to Transformations, uh, excuse me, Introduction to Functions. And in Section 3 4, we want to talk about transformations on functions. We can think of these as uh, ways we can move a function around that starts with one of those basic functions that we talked about in the beginning of the chapter. You know, those being the identity function, the, the square root function, the absolute value function, that kind of thing. And so what we want to be able to do when we uh, do transformations is to first move them up and down and left and right. Those are called the vertical and horizontal shifts. So uh, you can take a look at those in examples one and two on how to do that. And then we want to be able to look at a reflection of a function. By that we mean a reflection about the x-axis. And you'll see that used in example 3. And then uh, we want to take a look at what happens when we add multiples. Multiples where uh, the coefficient would be bigger than 1 and smaller than 1. And those result in stretches and compressions. And you'll see those shown in examples 4 and 5. So I think the main thing we want to be able to uh, get from this uh, section is to be able to list out a sequence of transformations. In other words, how do we take a uh, basic function and end up with a more complicated function through a sequence of transformations? And so you want to take a look at example six and the, uh, in particular, the um, the uh, transformation that's being done, and then the resulting intermediate function that we get, and then finally all the way to the end of the uh, function that we're given itself. So in, in section uh, 3.4, uh, we want to start on ebook screen 3.6-23 uh, in practice exercises 1 through 45 odd, and if you have the summary notebook, those start on page 155. Now, uh, moving along to section 3.5, uh, that's uh, kind of the meat of the uh, module here, the algebra of functions and composite functions. Now, now, the transformations are certainly important, and your, your graphing calculator is certainly uh, a fantastic tool for transformations. And now we're going to do something more algebraic in section 3.5, where we first um, uh, take a look at the operations of functions. Now when we say operations we mean addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we're not doing that in terms of real numbers now, but in terms of functions. So if you look on ebook screen 3.5-3, you'll see a nice summary of what those four operations of functions are. So we want to be able to evaluate a uh, combined function, meaning a function that uh, is the result of these operations of functions. And you'll see that done in examples 1 and 2. And we also want to be able to write the domain of the result of these operations of functions. And so you'll see a nice example of that in example 4. And you know, the, 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 certainly the main emphasis is to be able to evaluate uh, a uh, combined function. In other words, you know, show the algebra behind that. And also, um, then the other thing in this section that's the, the other main component is composite functions. So we want to be able to first form a composite function. Think of, of a composite function as a function nested inside another function. So we want to be able to simplify that, and then we want to be able to evaluate it. By that, we, we want to be able to plug in numbers for our independent variable value x and get a y value or an f of x value back. And you'll see that done in examples 5 and 6. And then finally, to be able to, we want to be able to write the domain of a composite function. And there's a real nice explanation of that in example 7. So uh, in uh, that section, in section 3.5, uh, the homework there starts on uh, uh, ebook screen 3.5-24 page 146 in your in your summary notebook and those will be exercises 1 through 49 odd 59 and 63 and then finally to wrap up this chapter in section 36 that function uh, that that section is on 
uh, one-to-one -one functions and inverse functions. And there's really just two primary things we want to be able to do there. First, we want to be able to graph a function and determine whether or not it's one-to-one -one using the horizontal line test. Horizontal line test means that if we can uh, uh, take horizontal lines and and uh, you know, right through a function and it hits the function in more than one spot, then it's not one to one. And uh and, and that's important because in or in order for an inverse to exist, the function must be one to one. So take a look at an example one there, and then we want to go through the algebraic process of finding the inverse of a one to one function. Think of an inverse function as a function which undoes what a given function really does. So that's uh, shown in example four. And then in section uh, three six, uh, we want to do exercises one through 25 odd, and then 33 through 39 odd. Those start on page 155 in your summary notebook and 3.6-23 on your uh, ebook. So uh, take a look at that stuff. That'll wrap up uh, section 3.6. So that is your module 6 topics checklist.